first again, thanks for the invite, um, Assemblyman Chair, uh, Chair Nolan and Assemblyman Jaffe. Um, in regards to your earlier question, you were asking about population, student population loss. About one third of the school districts in the state are gaining population, and two thirds of the school districts in the state are actually losing population. So you do have many school districts outside of the New York City metro area that are actually mothballing and closing schools and selling them off or repurposing. So I just wanted to touch base on that. Um, when we got the invite on, on Monday afternoon, we, we immediately uh, reached out to our, our members because uh, I wanted to get their feedback and incorporate their feedback into our, uh, our testimonies, which, which we have. So uh, first of all, you know, the commissioner touched upon this. Uh, you did follow through. The legislature did approve. Yes, if you did get the extra $800,000, but th there's still a tremendous bottleneck at facilities planning at SCD, right? So they talked about the fact that they had not been able to hire the people that they need, the engineers and the architects, to, to deal with the 30-week backlog, which for school districts and capital projects, any time that there's the delay in the approval process costs the districts and their taxpayers more money in terms of borrowing costs, in terms of the, um, the, the contractors. Uh, sometimes contractors go out of business and they have to go rebid. So any delay, I mean, uh, I think the uh, folks from New York City talked about they submitted their Smart Schools Bond Act uh, proposal back in May of 2016 and are still waiting approval on that. The, the backlog not only for the regular construction projects but also for the smart schools is tremendous. And some school districts thinking that, well, we should combine our smart schools proposal with their capital projects is now a double whammy. So they're waiting for one, they're waiting for the smart schools review board to approve one component of it, then they're waiting for SED to approve the capital project part of it. And it's, it's really been a disaster for those school districts trying to coordinate the approval process. The Smart Schools Review Board has not been meeting quarterly like they were supposed to. So there's the delay in the meeting process, there's the delay in the approval process. So all of this is exacerbating what was already a tremendous backlog in, in the SED approval process. Now, I have to give a lot of credit. We all really support uh, the commissioner, SED has done a great job, uh, the hiring of uh, the promotion of Christina Coughlin, the assistant commissioner job, they're doing a yeoman's job, but again, there are stumbling blocks that are preventing them from maximizing and utilizing their, their resources effectively. The problem is, is the civil service classifications for the engineers and the architects, the pay scale isn't, isn't up to speed with the private sector, so they can't even recruit people. They are making efforts to streamline the process, uh, one of our recommendations is actually the legislature tasking SED or requiring SED to come up with recommendations for streamlining that the legislature could actually act on. You did this a couple of years ago when uh, I think the legislature asked SED to streamline the reporting requirements and the SAMs and all that kind of stuff. And then SED came back with all these recommendations about all the reports that school districts had to submit. You should do the same process again with SED and asking them to actually come up with concrete recommendations to streamline the process. They have contracted with one of the BOCES, the city BOCES, which is the Oswego BOCES in upstate, to help vet many of the earlier projects, right? So help streamline that. We want to take that a step further. Instead of having just one BOCES be responsible for vetting a lot of the construction projects, why don't you use all the BOCES? If those BOCES who are willing to be a vetter of construction projects to make sure that all the, the T's are crossed and the dies are dotted, why don't we expand that to include other BOCES? Um, as you know, um, some of you know, and I was chair of the, uh, or executive director of the Library Association. And with the public library construction projects, they first go to each of the individual library systems, the public library systems, first vet the construction projects before they're submitted to SED. I would suggest perhaps a similar proposal or similar process be used to vet um, uh, school construction projects. Um, one of the other issues we're, we're hoping to uh, address is the um, outsourcing. So SED got approval to outsource some of their reviews, uh, and, but the problem is, again, the, the prices and the costs of these outsourcing to these private firms are not meeting what the market is willing to bear. So perhaps there's a way to outsource some of the reviews, not to maybe private firms, but to other state agencies that already do this kind of work. Good example is the dormitory authority. The dormitory authority already has a construction division and an engineering division, which already vets a lot of similar type of construction projects. Perhaps there's a way to use existing state agencies to outsource some of the review process. Um, the folks from the Facilities Association talked about the Building Condition Survey. We do that every five years. The next time we do it is in 2020. 
when all the school districts use the building condition survey to build, you know, to plan on what their new construction projects are going to be, like they said, that all that stuff goes to SED all at the exact same time. So staggering the building condition survey from instead of doing every five years, you had this one third of the school districts do it in 2018, one third of it do in 2019, and next, and then that way we won't have all these projects going all at the same time. So again, I, I would task uh, SED, you know, the legislature, making them come up with a better streamlined process like they've done in the past and perhaps doing something better with the civil service and trying to get more engineers and architects to work at SED. Thank you very much. I, I think the suggestions are, are excellent and our team is here, so um, our staff team is here, so we'll definitely um, be following up with you um, and maybe somebody on my staff as well because they're, they're good ideas. And, you know, I want to say I certainly want to, uh, you know, salute the governor for uh, putting out the Smart Schools Bond Act. I commend the executive and Governor Cuomo's office for the work that they've done in DOB. But yes, we too want to see more money out the door. We want to see more uh, expeditious review, and we want to see this be used in a way that's effective um, for our schools as we try to modernize them and do the kind of connectivity and uh, upgrades that we need both for pre-K in the city and um, the trailer removal issue, which is still to me a shocking uh, thing that never should have been allowed to have had happen. But, um, as we work away, <laughs> we work away. So, um, you know, I really want to thank you for the ideas and we will follow up and I really appreciate your coming forward. I, I always feel I need to do more and hear from you guys more. I know that, that our door of our office is always welcome, but maybe now that you have somebody who grew up in Glendale, <laughs> did you go to Grove <laughs> Cleveland yourself? Yeah, my parents are still there. Yeah, They're yeah, what there. year did you graduate? 66th place. I graduated from St. Pancras. Um, I graduated. What, year, what year did you graduate Cleveland? Um, I graduated St. Francis Prep High School oh, in 1982, oh, okay. but right. I went, yeah. yeah so. I knew you were younger than me, but I just my, wanted to make sure. My brother, no, no, no. My brother yeah. graduated from 91 Queens. My parents went to 91 Queens, Richmond Hill High, yeah. both we'll, we'll graduates. It would be, be a pleasure to talk with you just to come by it and would, say hi. Absolutely. I would um, so love, definitely I would love come the opportunity. Up How often is your organization up here? I don't know the facilities. Do you have like a con convention? Oh, we, we are up all the time. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and we have him and Stroud. Him and Strap represents us here at I Albany. See, I see. Well, and uh, we come up, thank you, thank you, yeah. Mike. We come up as a group um, every March, and we come up in between with some other leadership okay, folks. Good. And yeah. Well, we certainly want to, want, to, want to keep the dialogue going. Absolutely. We are welcome. I just we wanted to, that. the reason I, I brought all that up is I know you mentioned the um, Sunningham and Galos bill, which we certainly supported um, on the um, letting them promulgate rules and regulations for BOCES, for example, and some of the others, but they haven't promulgated those rules yet. So. And there's some other issues. I know Ellen wants to talk about the tax cap, which we know. So um, do you want to comment on your recommendations, your group's recommendations on, you know, Smart Schools Bond Act or the things that Mr. Borges brought up about the uh, timing of the reports and things like that? Did you want to add anything? Yeah, I, I think, you know, you were talking about the rule of unintended consequences. You know, so taking as an example, the, you know, the building condition survey. I think that was seen as we'll have a snapshot in time that tells us right now what everything is and that'll let us plan. The unintended consequences though, and, and one of the things you've also spoken about a number of times is when all that responsibility was put on SED, they were given no additional funding, no additional staffing. And I think that's the biggest issues for us in, in school facilities would be staffing at SED so we can get projects moving um, and adequate funding for maintenance. You know, come back to, you know, the, the, the theory behind rolling minor maintenance aid into foundation aid and everything else is, you know, let's let the local school board know, they'll best know how to use that money. I can tell you the experience of most of our members is nobody's thought it's best to use it on maintenance anymore, <laughs> you know. We used to get that money and it let us, you know, take care of some problems that were looming. Um, I think we've got to look at how we fund school maintenance, give incentives to do school maintenance, and maybe give a penalty if you don't do school maintenance. You know, if you come back in with that project prematurely, hey, you just did a roof 10 years ago, why are you coming back to us now? Maybe you don't get all the aid on that roof. Mm -hmm. You know, there's got to be some responsibility right. and direction given to the local school district to say, here's what you need to do to take care of your school. So, so we'll definitely be following up on all these things. Let me just turn my attention now sure. to BOCES, you know, which I always say, I, I, now I chair the committee many years, I'm really been remiss in not visiting more of the BOCES and I want it because in the city we don't have it. And as you know, we did though have a hearing on career and technical ed, the Southern Bend DC was very active in that with us. We did it in Utica. We had all those Holly Davidson people come. It was, exactly. <laughs> it was a memorable hearing for, for that alone. <laughs> but um, uh, but the people that make the plates, the special metal work. But yep. you know, my, 
I'm always very upfront. My own son attended a really wonderful CTE school in New York City called Aviation High School. So Absolutely. I personally am a big fan of CTE. And you yourself, as a person you could say a non-traditional handyman, right, mm -hmm. um, is very important uh, to learn how to fix things and learn how things work. And you know, I know the 3D printers maybe are going to let us have even more disposability, but I like to see things fixed, right? So um, you know, there's so many wonderful things that happen <clears> in our BOCES, and um, you know, I hope it. it now that I'm not living the dream of a public school parent, maybe have a little extra time, uh, he's in college now, uh, to visit some of these things and not just have you come to a hearing. But um, talk a little bit about BOCES. What would be your, your number one priority? or your, What is the state, of, for example, of BOCES infrastructure, your biggest unmet capital needs? And then I assume you're aware, as I mentioned to them, that de the Department of Tax and Finance, even though Assemblywoman Gayless bill passed two years ago has not actually promulgated any regulations Correct. on uh, on this issue. So yep. um, talk to us a little bit more. Sure. Uh, briefly, probably three things. Number one, um, as you know from Aviation High School, I toured a fantastic program. How infrastructurally intensive those programs are, you have to be at industry standard. So our ability to maintain industry standard in our CTE shops is very, very important. Um, and it costs a lot of money to do that. Number two, um, we are uh, really receiving numbers of referrals for special education students around the state that we don't have the space to be able to accommodate in numbers of kids on waiting lists. So the ability to increase space to meet the needs of kids who have very significant, very significant needs, um, that is a major concern around the state. And um, the State Education Department actually has uh, statistics on kids that are not currently in placements. Much of that is space needs. Um, I would say number three, since our buildings are from the 50s or 60s, while we do do a lot of maintenance, our lack of ability to do more significant capital work periodically is starting to catch up to us. So probably those three things. And and on the safety issue, we're, we've talked a lot about that today. Yeah, I think that um, we have very unique, uh, we have a number of students that may be medically fragile, a number of different um, every you know number of different safety issues we deal with every day we were not made eligible for the safe schools money nor were we eligible for smart uh, schools bond um, that's uh, curious considering the programming that we do do so how big yeah. a problem has that been for is that something we could go forward as it we is. move forward could we recommend to the governor and the division of Absolutely. the budget that so, so be part of the smart schools bond act you know the another iteration of the bond act I, you know i go back so long i worked on Governor Mario Cuomo's Job Bond Act. Absolutely. I, I literally, I am not kidding, I was just starting out. I stood on the platform of the Long Island Railroad with Governor Cuomo for hours talking about the Jobs Bond Act. So I go back a long way on these bond acts, trust me on that. So maybe it would be time to um, uh, you know, look at, at that issue and maybe Absolutely. you could even, I know you're also represented, but everyone here has people that work with them, law firms and others, maybe they could submit to us a proposal that would that would deal with that because it's disappointing that they weren't part of sure. that you weren't part of it. So what would you like to see on that if we could well, solve we could, that problem? We could we can certainly submit a proposal. Certainly, we uh, given the nature of the population that we serve, uh, safeties of of our facilities is the utmost importance. Um, the ability to just be able to when those programs come out for BOCES to be able to access them equally, I think would be would be a fair thing. Um, smart schools money. Um, much of what we do in career and technical education is very high tech at this point. Uh, that's things we could use to upgrade our infrastructure and technology um, to provide. We are, we are supposed to be able to level a playing field for kids so they have equal access to these things when they come to our programs. It's difficult to do. We're in a unique situation that um, school districts can improve facilities for students in advanced pace placement programs, but we can't do it for a special education student or, or a CTE student. Um, that's a an unfortunate bifurcated system in New York State right now. I just want to echo. I'm just. Yeah. I just want to. We, we would like to. I'd like to see a little bit more, like in writing. In other words, from, you, uh, from the BOCES about what you want to see. If that, I don't know if that would be an assembly. You know, the assembly has our own internal, very, you know, conference committee recommendations, our staff recommendations. You know, it goes on and on internally. Sure. Our speaker has to weigh in, and I want to thank Speaker Hasty for putting an emphasis on uh, families first. That's the assembly's. Absolutely. Uh, overarching thing and for uh, the support of the central staff for doing this hearing and the speaker's team for doing the hearing. So mm -hmm. I want to be able to say, here's the BOCES issue. Absolutely. Here's the, you know, we, we work on paper too. I know it's not really a paperless world yet. So that would be helpful to us. You know, even a one page thing that we, we could articulate this a little more tightly that we were left out of it. We shouldn't have been, perhaps we shouldn't have been, but going forward, we have to, you know, we want to reinvent the wheel. We need to be in it for these reasons, connectivity, security, Absolutely. Pre-K, whatever it is. You got it. All right? Yes. Especially, you know, we, there's going to be a meeting in uh, 
November, I know Assemblywoman Fahey has sponsored, and I don't know, Ellen, you may be sponsoring it as well, with a number of people who are focused on expansion of pre-K throughout our state, because Correct. we are, and, and we have colleagues that have worked very hard to have more kindergarten, mm -hmm. never mind pre-K kindergarten available. So it would be helpful if we, um, that's gonna be coming up in November, so it would be helpful if we had some more information from you about your unmet capital needs. Absolutely. All right, good, thank, thank you. you. Did you wanna, yes. Oh yeah, I just wanted to, uh, Re reiterate what Dan had said about um, BOCES being the great equalizer, especially upstate New York, where many school districts are so small and rural, they can't offer the same kinds of programs and you know, equal opportunity for education that the BOCES can provide. And what's happening now, particularly with the CACS cap, is that um, school districts, especially the ones that don't have the local resources, are not supporting BOCES capital projects because it's going to impact their budgets and their tax cap calculations, which means the very institutions that are enabling them to provide AP and special ed are going to let suffer. Let me just let, let El, yeah. that you actually sort of addressed what Ellen, so let her no, ask no, her. I agree with you. I think that it's, um, it is very problematic in terms of allowing and providing BOCES with the opportunity to continue to expand I mean, the services that you are providing for our youth in terms of, you know, as they you know, move up in high school and then reaching out and they look for preparing for careers it has been very impressive. And I've met with a number of the students and I've been to the BOCES. Not being able to provide the, you know, your capital needs, you know, with the capital funds because you are stuck within that area of that tax gap, sure. whereas our other schools, our schools are not in that place with, the, with providing capital projects. Um, I agree with you, and it's something we've been arguing for. We're going to continue. Perhaps yeah, this year would be a good time to um, even raise the bar in terms of, of the kind of you know activism that we have and, and uh, support. It's something we do need to do so that you can move forward, expand your programs, provide safe environments, but, yeah. al but also provide the kind of uh, structures that really offer more op opportunities for the youth in various programs. So. I, I agree that that is, that is a major issue. That well, in the event that the governor doesn't sign the, the BOCES capital project exclusion bill, I think it's worthwhile exploring with the legislature an, other avenues or other mechanisms that can help fund BOCES capital projects that will not adversely impact the school district's tax cap calculation. So in the event that that doesn't happen with the governor, we really should be looking at plan B as to how else can we address this problem, because this is not a problem that's going to go away. Okay. I think, you know, we'd like to pursue an additional dialogue post-hearing. We appreciate the suggestions very, very much. Thank you. And we're just trying to juggle. We could talk all day, but I want to get some of our other witnesses out there. So thank